Hi everyone, and welcome to the MKT version 2.0 part 2. Uh, keep in mind this trailer was literally uh, snatched from the jaws of death, sold for $100 for the scrap metal. And this is uh, going to be a presentation on how I revived all that. Hi, this is Dave Anderson again. Welcome to uh, my channel, Heli Cool Sully Pad, or uh, Heli Cool 1104. Um, today we're going to be going over this uh, custom trailer that I built for the Boy Scouts and uh, all of the different aspects of it. It ought to be a good time. There's Hopefully you get uh, some, some good ideas on what you would consider putting into a Scout trailer or a bug out trailer, if you will, because it has a lot of things that uh, deals with cooking and other things. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. Uh, this trailer has two sides to it, one a washing side and one a cooking side. And right here is the washing side. You can see the sinks that are uh, mounted on the side of the trailer. Um, and we have a spout where you can hook up your uh, um, water so that you can rinse dishes, wash dishes, that kind of thing. And I'm going to kind of show you how all of that works. Um, so first, uh, we'll we'll take the we'll take the sinks down, and we'll show you how all of that uh, operates. So in order to take the sinks down, you first have to uh, pull this pin to let this leg down a little bit because this leg is in the stowed position, so it doesn't go flopping around when I'm driving down the road. It has several positions that you can uh, put it in when it gets uh, on the train so that so if you have a hole there you can extend it so that it's actually touching the ground. All right, now we're ready to pull the main pin that holds everything up. Just a cotter key. And this is just a big, uh, a big pin to hold all this in place. Now these swing out of the way. And what we have here is a double hinge. The first hinge allows it to come forward. And the other hinge is double hinge. It allows it to move this direction. Once it is in this position, you can use it as a as a sink like it's intended to be used. Uh, we do have the valves underneath that you can uh, stop up the sink so that you can collect water in it, get soapy water or of course, the first one is to uh, hot soapy. Second one is a hot rinse. And the third is a cold with bleach. But uh, here's how the mechanism works. First you have the hinges that make it go over uh, and lean against the side of the two wheels. And the other hinges are to let it let uh, to stow it or let it uh, come down now in order to fill up the uh, tank up top there's a 45 gallon tank you can either do it by electric pump a little, little uh, 12 volt DC pump or you can hook a garden hose up to it um, so I just pull this off a little bit of excess water in there from last time I filled it up and that comes all the way up to a valve, which is open right now because I wanted everything to drain out of there. But uh, once you have everything pumped up into it, your, your water pumped up into the tank, you just take this valve, turn it off, and then you can unplug your garden hose and all of the water will remain uh, up in the tank. Now here is the uh, 12 volt pump. You can do virtually the same thing. There's a switch on the inside that operates the 12 volt pump. So if you didn't have access to a garden hose, if you truly were off the grid, uh, you could just uh, 
um, hook a battery up to um, the power supply for the trailer and you could pump water into the trailer the same way. Now inside, this is basically just an air dam so that I can uh, travel down the road without it causing a whole lot of extra air drag on the, uh, on the movement of the trailer. And what it's allowed me to do is make a couple of shelves and uh, here's the garden hose and some cleaning equipment. Um, and this is actually uh, gets hooked onto the end of the hose. It is right up there. And it's for washing dishes. Now when I get everything put up and set up in place, uh, right on this area here is where I have a um, five gallon uh, jug of water and usually some paper cups so they can come right up to the trailer. They know where the water is at. Uh, potable water. So as I say, the uh, very top of this is a 45 gallon tank and it's got an air dam in front to ramp air up over the top. Water goes inside with that small uh, spot and it comes out the larger and of course comes down and fills the sinks, fills the drain. Um, the tank also has a bleeder valve at the top so it evacuates the air as the water is rushing in and so it doesn't cavitate when the water is being drained out. Now you could fill it using two different methods. One is just wait till the water starts pouring out of that top uh, bleeder um, but there's also these sight glasses that I built into the back and if you're watching closely, you can see the water start going up at, uh, and, and getting darker as it, uh, as it fills the tank. There's uh, two of them. So depending on what side the, of the trailer that you're looking, you can watch the water. If you only want a half tank, you can watch it and it'll fill up to the about halfway mark and then you can shut the water off. There's a double set of batteries that powers the, the trailer. Well, actually one powers the trailer, the other one is just on charge. So solar out power goes into this battery and the uh, power in from the battery goes into the trailer, comes from this battery. So once this one's dead, you just swap it out with the other one, get it charged up and it charges. via these solar panels. There's three solar panels up on the roof and uh, produces about 45 watts. So this is where the power from the solar panel comes in. Got a little digital display and I have built a little electric panel I just put some stickers on just to be fun. But you can see there's water pumps, storage lights, front lights, cabin lights, spare. Um, everything, of course, has circuit breakers protecting it. And uh, it's kind of a pretty easy system. It's not that hard to do. It's just DC volts. But uh, that's where the solar panel it uh, comes in very handy to charge these batteries. And moving around to the back of the trailer, um, I can open up this entire uh, back part just by pulling that and um, I can open up the entire back. Of course, this is a repurposed cattle trailer. If you don't want to open up the entire back of the trailer, uh, you can just slide open the door 
and that allows a little bit easier access in and out. And if you got a heater going in there, it doesn't let all your heat out, that kind of thing. Hey, you might be wondering, what the heck are these two rockets up on the trailer for? Are they just there for looks, or what are they? What's their purpose? Um, their purpose is is that they actually store the awnings that I have. There's one awning that goes on the on the uh, cooking side of the trailer, so that you have cover or shelter. while you're cooking and the other goes to an A-frame awning that I that I uh, built it's basically just out of poles and uh, so you have a a 10 foot pole um, and we just take two tarps and connect them to the pole and then we roll the tarps up on the pole and this is storage for them. Uh, when I first built these um, I had to put them at an angle because I couldn't reach as high as what this uh, roof line is so putting it at an angle made it easier to to uh, stow the, um, the tarps so I decided that they look so much like rockets that I would go ahead and and put the nose cones on them and and uh, they sure get the looks which you know, that's kind of like what we were going for you know get looks get uh, get kids interested in in scouting get kids interested in in your troop even adults. Now this is the cooking side of the trailer and you'll probably notice there's a hook there a couple of hooks. Oh, spaced out about every two feet or so. Okay, well that is where the awning um, gets hooked onto the top of the trailer. Um, so I would step right here and then start stepping up onto the trailer. There's some anti-skid tape. I have a handhold and I just start putting the tarp on with these handholds moving all the way across the top until I have the whole thing put in. And of course you can't have cooking without fuel. Um, so there's these little lines, there's two there and there's an additional two there. So, so what's behind these things? Well, let me show you. Okay, so it's spring-loaded with a bungee cord so I don't lose the cap, but it is, uh, it's a, a copper pipe, and of course this is a, um, a quick connect for an air hose. And you have to remember that, uh, that after the gas goes through the pressure regulator, it's only, it's only going about 8 to 10 psi. So one of these that'll, that'll go, you know, 200, 250 PSI is, is plenty. And, and all I had to do is modify a couple of lines. And uh, I could hook directly up to a camp chef and use one of these quick connects to pop right in. Just want to uh, show you a little bit of here. Here's one of the, here's one of the lines. Um, but I have these these rubber um, has a rubber inside here and it's a little rubberized clamp and anytime where it might even touch something I've got some kind of a, a foam padding foam barrier to prevent any chafing but again definitely you don't want to have any um, you don't want to have any pipe um, on the inside of a cavity where it could uh, build up fuel. So if you're going to plumb any pipe in here to a uh, trailer that previously didn't have any gas before, make sure that it is uh, outside and in the open or underneath like I've got mine. So for being organized, I also thought I probably should 
should point out a few safety things with the gas lines. Um, so these are the gas lines that I've made. The hardest part about this is uh, figuring out what what is the part that would actually hook up to a camp chef. Um, so I actually had to come up with, there's one part here, there's another part inside of here. So there's several different parts here that finally um, got me the fitting that I wanted. This, of course, being, um, you know, that goes inside the tube. Um, but it this was the most expensive part of this But I finally got it finally got it right You'll have to do a little trial and error and hopefully if you can see what I've got here You can kind of recognize some of the parts But uh, this is what I was going to mention um, This wasn't also hooked up and probably work a little better Okay, so here's the regulator and the other side of the regulator I have a quick connect and again several pieces to make so that I have a quick connect on here several adapters but the way a propane tank works is it has a safety valve and if it detects an open valve it goes into safety mode so when you turn the valve on and this is say open, it'll go into a safety mode where it will only allow about one eighth of the pressure to come out. Um, so if you have your line hooked up to here, and uh, mine actually uh, hooks up right down inside there. Okay, you can see the upper part of it. Um, and that goes to all of the, the camp chef sides. If one of the valves is open on the camp chef and you go to light it, even on full blast, it'll only, it'll only give you a flame about that much. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Um, it's because that your tank has a safety valve in it and it detected something was open. So what I do is I go ahead and hook up the regulator and I turn this valve on. Well, because I have these, those quick connects, it, uh, doesn't detect a leak and then I go ahead and connect it into the rest of the trailer which feeds all of the rest of these of these ports and in that way I uh, don't go into safety mode but I know right away when I'm in safety mode when I don't have a flame and I'm up full blast in order to correct that you have to come back to the tank turn it off shut off anything else that is that might be on and then turn it back on again and hopefully you'll be outside of safety mode and this is the other side of the trailer so the first side is that runs all of the camp chefs for cooking and this side um have a regulator to here and it comes down to this part here and this is the uh, internal fuel hookup um, so this is the only uh, line that actually goes inside the trailer but it doesn't until it absolutely has to um, I have a, a heater inside and a, um, a single burner for some coffee let's say um, I just took a nitrate glove and plugged up this hole because this is a quick connect and there's actually uh, insects that will crawl inside that hole and lay an egg daub it up and it will completely stop this thing up so you got to protect this from any kind of bugs intruding into the system as i was saying i have a, a heater inside here so the line basically just comes through the floor right down there feeds to the heater and then it also feeds to this uh single burner that i have here for coffee um, so this is this is basically just reclaimed off of a a uh, burned out um, barbecue this is the side grill that was on it and it still works great uh, was hardly ever used and has a nice little cover so I can actually use this as a, a little bit of a table or if I'm early in the morning 
and I'm just waking up and it's still cold out. Maybe I want to have brew up some coffee or, or uh, just make some eggs. So I have two tanks, uh, one for the inside and one for the outside. Uh, this inside one, I have to say, probably hardly ever gets used. Um, although I did use this heater. Um, and this is just a wall-mounted heater that I got from my brother. He found it at Goodwill. And uh, for Klondike, I used I used this heater because, well, it got down pretty cold. And I was just kind of wanting a little bit more creature comfort. I have several uh, scout emblems that uh, a buddy of mine, um, he traded me something for. Um, these are out of aluminum. Um, pretty large, too. I mean see how big that is compared to my hand um, but I anyway I traded them because I, I wanted this you know to be a scout trailer and and uh, look all scout like so um, so I have them around the the back lights and on both sides of the rig um, but I just I just wanted a little bit more uh, scout like stuff I'll show you a little bit more about that right up here this is kind of like the uh, the wall of what I've been doing I took wood badge back in uh, 2008 a little bit about who I am and what I've done uh, I don't know if you can see I kind of ghosted in this uh, Apache because a lot of times I don't I don't usually uh, tell people that I flew Apaches because um, Apache pilots kind of have a, a bad reputation well, I shouldn't say reputation, but there's a lot of jokes about Apache guys, such as uh, how can you tell there's an Apache uh, pilot at your party? He'll tell you. What do they use as birth control? Their personality. Um, this is a tribute to uh, both my sons, Alex and Zach, who got their Eagle Scout in 2015. And the rest of this is just kind of a litany. Um, that's when I got my Order of the Arrow ordeal and brotherhood. And some of the 50 milers that we've been on, 2014 and 15, we're doing another one in 18. And some other of the events that we that we do. Um, we did the Olympic uh, um, Flight Museum. The, the, we have a, a, the air show, and we, uh, we actually stopped doing that a few years ago. Um, but Threshing Bee... That's uh, there in Toledo. If you look up uh, Threshing B B E E in Toledo, Washington, um, see what that's all about. Uh, NYLT, I staffed it for two years, 16 and 17. And um, this year I'm staffing the Wood Badge course, which ought to be a good time. And then just for fun, I just put a whole bunch of other stickers on here that kind of show my military uh, background. And, uh, and as far as the star for knowledge and the star for truth, those are the two stars that are on the um, first class badge. And that's what they stand for, truth and knowledge. So I made sure to, to put that on there. Um, probably see this pole here as well. This is a telescoping a 20 foot flagpole. And uh, that goes up anytime that we're obviously stationary. Um, and then I have a couple more stickers over on this side. Uh, this area is a big uh, Bigfoot area. <laughs> um, I don't really believe in Bigfoot, but I have done a couple spoof videos. It was kind of fun. And of course the um, zombie uh, craze um, a lot of scouts are doing uh, um, zombie related kind of things it's it's more of a fun thing not a not a weird thing and the troop that that uh, I'm associated with uh, was established in 1968 and on the back here we just have uh, some more uh, Sasquatch stuff, some more zombie stuff, and um, this is a Boy Scouts MKT or a mobile kitchen trailer, and um, that's what it's all about. All right, so we're gonna go into these tra these uh, fronts now. This 
this part wasn't even here. These, these doors did not even open before. Um, but when this trailer rolled with the eight head of cattle in it, uh, these, these parts here got really dented up bad because it kind of rolled up onto the trailer. So I pulled these, cut these doors out and ran them over with my truck. And then I decided, well, you know, I'm just going to make doors in it because there's a whole lot of space up front. And I'd like to be able to get to it or have access to it from the outside rather than having to go all the way in inside to have access. So on this side, I have the Scout Oath. And on the other side, I have the Scout Law. Here's the things that I have inside of here. Um, this is a barrel stove that my brother made, Bad Bob, uh, Bad Bob Anderson. Um, the uh, horseshoes welded on it. That was, of course, my idea. <laughs> I was there when he made it. But uh, he does all kind of stuff with these Chinese um, uh, one-time use wrenches, which is really just kind of... <laughs> It's kind of cool what we do with this kind of stuff, but I've had this out many times. The scouts have about burned a tent down with that thing. Um, of course, we have the the dinner bell, and I have an extension cord. And this this stand here is what this barrel stove uh, will actually set on. And then inside all of these, I just have a lot of of uh, wood. This is all my fire starting stuff. So there's wood shavings. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, split alder um, and uh, two bins full of fire starting materials. Um, lots and lots of Altoids tins. And if you're wondering about that, Altoids tins, uh, they make they make great um, uh, char cotton. Um, so lots of stuff in here. There's my hose that uh, I would fill the tank with. And uh, this is actually uh, the chimney um, to the um, to the barrel stove. And we'll check out the other side. Okay, so this is the other side, and here I have the Scout Law of all the things that's uh, near and dear to the Scouts. Um, of course, here's the there said you can tell there's a whole bunch of different stuff in here from sterno to I mean there's there's everything um, from char cotton materials uh, anything that you can think of to start a fire matchless uh, mostly um, and then uh, of course there's more buckets full of different materials there's some uh, um, well, this is kind of <laughs> kind of in the way but this is this is um, a uh, axe yard a friend of mine who's also a blacksmith uh, made all of these this is this is out of wrought iron and all of these go around in a square with a gate that uh, that use is your entryway and that's just to keep the and all this caution tape here of course is to keep people out of there and and to keep scouts safe so that they're only using axes in one area and uh, not where they could actually uh, let go of the axe accidentally and fly it into somebody's uh, tent. So I have a Fisker's axe, and of course there's more dried split ends. I have um, wood pellets and pitch. If I can grab uh, some pitch from a tree, collect it in a baggie, I will. And I've got probably three or four quart bags full of, of pitch. Um, but anyway, that is the uh, inside of the of the uh, front part of the trailer. I'm just pointing out one more thing is I have to put these cotton balls up here and put skin so soft in the cotton balls just to keep the uh, wasps and things out of this area because it's black. It, it, it absorbs heat. They love to have that nice warm... Uh, uh, heat from this they build their nests you can see there's there's a spot there where they've built there's a spot there where they've built they've they build inside here um, all up and down this thing so in order to keep the wasps out 
I uh, use Skin So Soft with uh, cotton balls. Does the trick. Believe it or not, there's lots more to come, uh, but I'm going to cut this off for now, so I'll have an MKT Part 3 coming up. Thanks for watching, and please uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks.